house. I'm a photographer from Tucson, Arizona. Um, I got into photography about 10 years ago. Um, it started with a good friend of mine who is a car photographer. He wanted to use a pinhole camera for this, uh, this, one, um, this one ad. So he made a camera out of foam core and he was taping in 4x5 film in the back and, and he would try to hook it to a tripod and it would just end up shaky and the photos just look like crap. And, and I didn't even know what pinhole photography was before then. I never even heard of it. And I was just completely fascinated that light could come through just such a itty bitty hole and make such an amazing image. And so I thought the process was just amazing. And then I watched him struggle quite a bit with, the, uh, with that camera. So I told him I'd make him one. And in about two days, I machined out a camera out of uh, aircraft aluminum. And I was working as a machinist at the time. Machined it out of aluminum, um, but what I ended up doing is I had um, keyholes in the side that were from the turn of the century with insects crawling out of the keyholes and the acrylic windows over all the top of that. And then a Pablo Neruda poem that was etched in the top of the, uh, the camera. And then it had a tripod mounts underneath, so it was very, very stable. It had, I think, a 3 8 and a quarter 20 underneath. Stainless steel, of course. and. Um, and he was quite impressed by it. Also with that camera, you could take the 4x5 film in and out extremely fast. So rather than dealing with tape and everything, he was able to just whip it in and out and just knock off shot after shot after shot. And so that was the first, at the first camera I had made. One of the first cameras I made for myself um, after I made that camera for uh, my buddy Brian, the car photographer, was a camera called Dragonfly. It was, the Dragonfly is dedicated to photographing <clears throat> the moments of children. It was uh, motivated by my work I did about 20 years ago for a organization called Find the Children that was actually through the Justice Department. And I used to work as an investigator for missing children and kidnapped children. Uh, they would send me into different areas and uh, they said I had a very good point of awareness where I was able to sense my environment and they would give me a case a file and then ship me off to different places just to feel the environment. And there was this one little girl, I was uh, working on her case for about a year and a half. Her name was Courtney Clayton. And Courtney, I got really close with her family. They're all from Texas. And uh, there was one day when I was um, getting ready to go on a trip because there was another possible Courtney sighting. I was on my bicycle and I got hit by a car um, and broke eight bones all through the side of my body. And uh, actually, eight bones through this side of my body, so this side was totally immobilized, and this, I broke my, this arm too. So I was just a mess. I was on a lot of pain meds, and her family called and said they were praying for me. They sent flowers. And um, a couple days after that, Courtney's body was found. Uh, it was about two blocks away from their house in a field. And so the whole thing really had a major impact on me as far as you know, searching for this little girl for years. So I created this camera as an altar, or an actually functional shrine to her. And I photographed the uh, lives of children uh, with this camera. I want to be completely involved with the subject that I want to learn about. And that's what all these create cameras are created for. Self in the world that was spawned. 
When I show the cameras in galleries or museums, it's the camera with the photos they shot and a whole bunch of other things that go around with it because I see the photos, the cameras, and the whole installation as one focal point of the subject. It's, it's all focused on that subject. I actually created a camera that is all, that's made out of um, aluminum, titanium, copper, and acrylic, and it has HIV positive blood in the camera itself. There's a pump on the side that has a rare earth magnet on the outside and then one on the inside, and a piston with a check ball. So I fill the camera with blood, and it's actually my buddy David, it's his blood, it's his HIV positive blood, and that pumps through the camera, and then in front of two pieces of acrylic that are five thousandths of an inch thick. And at five thousand of an inch thick, with the right amount of heparin and sodium chloride nine percent, it becomes my number 25 red filter that you use in black and white photography for contrast. Uh, the photo shoots I've been doing have been basically public photo shoots of people that are HIV positive or have AIDS um, with general public all around. Some of the other cameras I've made, uh, I made as pretty much an experiment to see actually if, if it works. Uh, one of them was the underwater project or Yimmy Ya. It's a uh, 4x5 camera. It's an underwater camera. At that point when I made, I was, you know, I made this thing. It took months to make of machining because I just started with big chunks of billet aluminum and carved out the whole thing on the mill and um, and uh, this huge piece of acrylic broke a few pieces of like $300 pieces of acrylic um, before I actually learned how to machine acrylic and it's a it's an underwater 4x5 pinhole camera which I've never seen done before so I wanted to experiment with that and see how it went and and it, it worked actually amazing it worked far better than I thought The project I'm working on right now that I've uh, has been pretty much obsessing or taking over my life is called Divine Proportion. The camera is an 8x10 camera, so it uses 8x10 film. It's an x-ray camera, so it only uses x-ray film. The front and back of the camera are made out of half-inch thick x-ray room glass, and it's like two clamshells that come together. It's pneumatic, so you hit a switch underneath the uh, camera and the two glass clamshells separate. And then a um, film holder comes up at the same time. And then you slip the 4x5 film down inside, hit the switch again, and it closes around. So it's also a see-through camera, which I may be one of the first to actually have a completely see-through camera. Um, because I'm not concerned about light, I'm just concerned about radiation. The first use of the camera has been has been um, I've been working with a woman who uh, works with the Stanford Particle Accelerator and so what we're going to do is use this camera and this accelerator and I'm going to bombard icons of creation to destruction with 17,400 electron volts of x-ray radiation that are generated by a 24 meter underground accelerator and what it do the accelerator does is in a vacuum tube gets particles traveling at 999.9% .9 the speed of light and it'll go around and then it's hit by a magnet and it starts waving that particle and then it sheds off x-ray radiation and then as the radiation comes off it goes into a room called a hutch which is a big lead room basically that you're allowed to, that you could do experiments with this radiation in so the camera will be in there and this beam comes through i'm going to have an icon of creation and destruction in front of the beam and um, the first icon I'm going to be shooting is the Hindu god Shiva, and he's the Hindu god of creation and destruction. So the beam will impact Shiva. Um, photons from that, from the, from the uh, x-rays, will come screaming off of Shiva, and then through a two micron uh, tungsten pinhole that's in front of the camera. And because wavelengths of, of x-ray radiation are so different than um, light waves, the, you, the aperture has to be extremely small on it, and it's actually two microns is the actual aperture. 
And uh, to give you an idea what two I microns is, is um, a human hair is around 80 to 90 microns. And so that's the full aperture is two. And the second icon I'll be shooting is the bust of Robert Oppenheimer, um, as far as icons of uh, destruction and creation. The camera itself weighs about 90 pounds right now. It's the beefiest camera I've ever made. It's by far the most ornate camera I've ever made. In the back of the camera too, that you can see through the glass, is a statue of Shiva, the Hindu god Shiva. And he's standing on three pieces of trinitite, which uh, trinitite is glass that was formed at the Trinity test site during the first nuclear detonation. There was an um, 800 meter circle of glass formed from the gadget, which is the first nuke. It was a, a plutonium implosion bomb that, uh, and it completely fused the ground and turned it to glass. So that's what Shiva's standing on. And then above Shiva is a compass um, that I um, soldered to the back of Shiva. And it's, a, one, it's one of my grandfather's compasses that he actually designed all of his designs with. And it's kind of a little bit of a reference to um, like Masonic tradition as far as having the, um, the compass upside down or you know, apart. And it's kind of the rays of God coming down. And so this project studies religion um, and science, which have been at war since the age of science came in. And, um, and also um, art all at the same time. So it's kind of a bridge again between the three as far as a bridge between art, religion, and science. Oh,